everybody. Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics, and I have with me Scott Malone. Scott, thank you for joining once again. My pleasure. How are you doing, Paul? Beautiful background. It's Martin Luther King Day for those of you out there who are celebrating this wonderful American holiday. Um, so, Scott, you're using your green screen to show a little festivities. Uh, you sure I'm not really there? <laughs> you're right. I mean, I don't know. It looks like you're reporting from uh, the MLK official uh, headquarters there. No, I, it, as you know, we're playing around with green screens this morning. I'll switch over to uh, NASA Mission Control. There we go. And look how easy it is for you to switch that, um, which is something we're going to get into because I think people understand the power of green screens and why we're suggesting that they use them. But I think what a lot of people have trouble with is getting it done right and making it look professional. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We've got seven tips and I'm going to go ahead and use my green screen here to really, really uh, get high tech here. So seven tips for green screen pros. From a green screen pro. Now the big question is, are you actually writing on the chalkboard or is that part of your green screen background? <laughs> I know, that's a good question because I, that, I didn't want anyone to know about that because that could actually, <laughs> you know, really give away some of my, uh, my expertise. If I need to, I can use my virtual set to go in a little further. Let me see here. But uh, regardless, there's our tips there. Um, Scott and I are going to walk you through this. Scott, our first tip here is the green screen itself. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what makes your green screens at Screens of Green a little different than, uh, you know, what, what you might, maybe just a regular muslin screen, which is actually what we used here uh, for quite a long time. Sure. I, I think the majority of us that got into green screens started with the muslins and uh, tacking them up behind us in the office. And Screens of Green were born out of a demand for something that was much quicker to set up, much quicker to tear down, and was aesthetically pleasing uh, in a professional office setting. And so we tried about 50 different iterations of chemical compounds uh, on projector screen type screens. And we came up with our current screens of green uh, com compound. And, and this is what it essentially does is it gives you a flat green background. Now, like you and I have talked about, uh, the pixels can actually be almost any color nowadays with the computer software. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason green works so well is it's not regularly occurring, except for in my instance where I have green eyes. Occasionally I look very uh, spiritually detached, um, mm -hmm. but uh, green screen uh, takes out those background colors because it doesn't occur as often as some of the other colors. and. Uh, and then also you need to make sure you don't have a reflective material and projector screens themselves are obviously very reflective and we had to make a diffuse color uh, through part of the ink process so that it absorbed light as opposed to reflected light. Gotcha. So the, so one of the very first things you can do, and I know a lot of people are trying to work on stuff like this on a budget, but starting with a high quality green screen is going to avoid help you avoid so many other problems and unfortunately even if you did all of our seven tips but you didn't have a clean flat green screen to work with from the beginning even the tips that we're going to give you might not actually pan out so getting a high quality good green screen should be if you're using this for business you're using this for broadcasting you're using this for you know meeting with people face to face that should be your first step number two we have is the location of the green screen. And Scott, I know you have some um, tips here. Tell us about the location. All right, so a couple things. Uh, one we missed on our, our last discussion, Paul, was the size of your green screen. Mm. I think the majority of people, including myself, had a tendency to underestimate the size that you needed behind you. Uh, we recommend a minimum of uh, 82 inches on the diagonal. Uh, but most of our green screens are actually 100 inch or larger. And that gives you enough background to cover the full space behind you. Uh, you can see when I pan to the left or the right, it doesn't take much for me to be off screen and that's with a 100 inch mm -hmm. diagonal. And so if you go too small, uh, then you have to sit too close. So like we talked about with location, you wanna be approximately three feet in front of your green screen so that you're not too close and having the shadows on it. 
and you're not too far away that you need a, a full wall. And then you also want to be three to four feet from your camera. Now, Huddle Cam allows you to zoom in, so that there's exceptions in the higher end cameras. And then finally, from your light source, uh, we use LED lamps uh, that sit right on our desktops, and we make sure we're about two to three feet away from them. And the higher the light source, the better. It has a tendency to hide your double chin and all that kind of good yeah. stuff. Not that everybody's like me. Well, okay, so that, that takes us to number three here. So lighting, you touched on it. Uh, I got some notes here uh, from the team, from a bunch of different people here. You touched on lighting. Perhaps probably the most critical aspect of a good green screen layout is lighting. Um, you know, besides the screen itself being in place properly, that's kind of what we talked about, is lighting it up so that you're not doing down-facing lighting, you know, you're not having shadows on there. You talked about LED lights, diffusing lighting. Let's, let's kind of talk about how a perfect pers uh, setup would be and then kind of, you know, not every setup's ideal. What can we do to make it, make it at least work in most settings? Sure. Well, you said the magic word, diffuse lighting. Uh, if you have any focused lighting, uh, which is your typical light bulbs, uh, lamps, uh, you're going to have a lot of trouble with shadows and covering shadows, uh, not only on the green screen, but also uh, shadows in the room. Additionally, in your diffuse lighting nowadays, the best solution is actually the LED flat lighting. And if you can find an LED flat light or even one of those cheap LED strips, it can provide you some pretty good diffuse lighting. And like we talked about before, uh, the lighting used to be really important to light up the green screen so that you had a consistent color in the background of you. Uh, but nowadays there's a trick and I'll let you get into that later with focus on the camera. Ah, yes, the focus. Okay, so we talked about lighting. There's my little light bulb there. Um, <laughs> let me set a preset so I can go back and forth because I like being able to show that... Uh, that uh, blackboard full screen. So I'm gonna set, I already set a preset there. Set this one as two. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, number four is camera tuning. And camera tuning is something that I'll, I'll take that one. A um, couple different options for camera tuning. Now your standard webcam may have a little bit of tuning. Sometimes if you have like a Logitech webcam, you can download a driver for the camera and you can try to play around with the color settings. But when you get a Huddle Cam HD camera, it comes with a, with a um, remote control that actually has a menu that you can use to access a whole bunch of different options. And I won't pull it up now. This is we've only got 20 minutes for this webinar. But the things to think about here are, first of all, you know, you need to get the perfect picture. And we actually have a whole guide you can download to get the perfect picture. And really it starts with white balance, okay? You wanna get the white balance just right, contrast just right, then you can start tweaking with colors and things depending on if your room has a lot of fluorescent lighting and you're getting too uh, yellowy or there's a lot of red. You can remove some of the red. You can play with the colors. But the one feature that I found for um, – there's two real main things. One is hue. Okay, The hue is so important because we need green to look true. We need the color of this green to be as green as possible and um, not be confused with any – you know, green reflections on you, for example. The, the, the computer, green screen algorithms are very black and white. Remove green. That's all it is. The problem is getting the information properly to the computer, and that's where the camera is crucial. So we talked about getting the actual screen itself green, the lighting to make it actually green, putting the green screen right, but now we got to get the camera to properly view the green screen. And hue has been huge, and focus, believe it or not, is a game changer, uh, saves it all sometimes. Whereas, for example, I'll just kind of play with my focus here. Um, you can see that, actually, maybe I have to, I have it on, I turn on manual focus. Uh, you can see that I can kind of go out of focus, in focus, and then back out of focus again. So what you want to do is you want to just pinpoint yourself in focus and if you've done what Scott has suggested here with the location, we're saying roughly four feet behind you, that's enough for our cameras to go, this plane of existence is in focus, and that green screen behind us is now a blurry, diffused green. And that hides some of the shadows and some of the things that could be a problem. So 
cameras, it comes to obviously getting a great picture, but also the hue and the focus. So next we have, now we're getting, so now we've really, if you've gotten to here, you might be done. You might be good to go. When it comes to these last couple things that we have here, Scott, these are just kind of extra little things that you can tweak with if you really want to get perfect. But number five is actually using the software settings that uh, within Zoom video conferencing, which I think are somewhat minimal. Uh, but yeah. some of the broadcasting softwares like vMix and Wirecast, depending on what you're using, they do offer some, some interesting options. So the, there are software options. And you, you can't take a bad camera and fix it with software options, but you can take a good camera and make it a little bit better with software. Right, and there's really two types of software out there. Um, there's your fixed background, where you can't easily zoom in, zoom out, add 3D features to it. And then there's your 3D version, uh, like the virtual setworks and, and the vMix uh, software, and being able to uh, create the studio like what you're in right now, Paul. Um, yes. Those are pretty amazing. I know that you know the stories behind the development of it, but it came right out of the, the media and news uh, industry and has been translated into some pretty phenomenal software. It really has. And, uh, you know, the software options that are available today are absolutely incredible. Um, big fan of tweaking the software, making it perfect, um, and using virtual sets. Maybe we'll do a quick virtual set demo at the end of this. Um, the next option we have, now this is just really a big tip or trick, but when all else fails, um, you can use a dark background. So what happens when your, um, you know, your green screen's not ideal, everything else is not working, you end up getting black pixels behind you. And Scott, you're, you're looking great though. I mean, I'm not even seeing any pixels. You're, you're looking great. I can see a little bit around your edges of your ear. And again, you're using Zoom video conferencing, which is a primitive you know, new chroma key effect. If you look at me here, let me just, not that, you know, I'm using so much better stuff, but you can, you can't <laughs> even really see the, um, yeah. you can't even see the pixelation around the edges, right? Like, I mean, you, I'm not seeing any, I don't know if you are, no, but let all. me go ahead and just, just, so what a lot of people might see is something like this. See that pixelation behind me? Now, I've got a great way to just kind of go, okay, take it away, take it away. If you take too much away, you're gone. But um, one of the things is that if you see how I've got a little bit of pixelation, if it's a dark background, you can't see those black pixels as much. So last case scenario, use a black background, use something dark. It should make you um, pop out from that, that background. Yeah, as long as it's not the same color as your hair or the shirt that you're wearing. Yeah, good point. <laughs> and now I think I am seeing a teensy bit of pixelation because I had it just right and changed it a little. There we go. It doesn't like it to be played with. Okay, so that's number six. And we have one last tip for you guys, and that is optimize your image. And what we mean by that is cropping potentially um you can crop left and right and i'll show you a quick example of that like for example let's say um i'm getting a little bit of pixelation on the on the right hand side i could just crop that right out no one would know the difference right so something to think about i can already see i'm getting a little bit of pixelation so i'm gonna never change your color key in the middle of a set <laughs> yeah you can add that as eight <laughs> yeah, we're, gonna, we're changing this from seven to eight now, but um, cropping also leave plenty of rooms for your arms. And there's something that even I'm guilty of quite often um, is to leave room to actually move your arms without getting it cut off. Right. That looks unnatural. It doesn't look look good. So there's just something uh, something to think about when you're optimizing your image. Um, I'll show everyone my screen that I'm using here. It's quite large. This is this is the one Scott sent me here. 
um, quite large. And the thing I love about it is that I, it's a pull down screen. So I can literally, I'm not going to do it because we're in the middle of a show, but pull it down, goes all the way up. Well, one thing I can do is definitely I can zoom in on the, uh, the fact that it is a screen. So you can see there that um, it's just a nice little screen that mounts to the ceiling. And now, you know, a lot of people are retrofitting areas. You know, they're taking a boardroom or a conference room or a training room and putting something like this in so that you can see here the mounting hardware there. It just mounts right to the right to the, the su superstructure of the uh, of the building there. So something to think about uh, making your life easier, just pulling it up and down. Oh, my gosh. Before that, I had a green screen that, that had two tripods and uh, that didn't even work very well. I mean... Yeah. One of the things that a lot of people know when they get into this stuff is that you start small. You start wherever you start, and then you get better and better, and you get iteration after iteration. And um, Scott's going to give us a little example of his now. Beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. So. Mine's just slightly smaller than yours. I think yours is 165 inch vertical yes. or diagonal, and we're sitting at about 100 inch. So that pretty much does it for our tips for the day. Thank you so much for coming in, Scott. This has been a fun Facebook Live exclusive. It will be posted on YouTube. So if you're watching it on YouTube, on Mondays we broadcast to Facebook, on Fridays we broadcast to YouTube. Um, it's been so much fun having you here, Scott. Let me do a quick demo of our virtual set here. You can see that virtual sets allow you to really do some cool stuff. Let me remove this here. Look look at that, Scott. I even have a reflection of you down there. If you can move around a little. That's, yeah, that's pretty amazing. See that? Reflections. Uh, and this is from virtual set works. It, if I do it right, there's even reflections on this. See that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it really looks real. Everyone saw that we're just hiding behind green screens, but it's a really, really cool um, technology. You guys got to see the um, the green screen effects that we we've, we've been um, or our our top seven tips. I'll also have it available as a download, and also have it in the description below. But um, this should be a great little tip section for you guys to to really. That's if you can do all of that. You are on the way to being a live streaming green screen pro. Thanks, Scott. All right, you're welcome. Have a great day. Take care.